Justin was one of our early Recording King artists, and from the beginning he was really interested in playing a guitar that his fans could easily play as well. We were working with Joshua Black Wilkins, who was a Nashville photographer and musician, super talented guy. He gave me a call and said, hey, uh, one of my friends is going to be reaching out to you. You might have heard of him. His name is Justin Towns Earl. I was like, wow, of course, yes, great. So Justin gave me a call and said, hey, uh, I'm really interested in playing one of your guitars. Could we make that happen? Of course, I said yes. And from then on, he pretty much didn't play anything else. Justin had the two most important qualities I think an artist can have, skill and taste. He was such a great songwriter that I think a lot of times his guitar playing existed in the background, but he was really a killer, unbelievable player. Uh, if you listen closely to what he's playing, you can tell that his kind of fingerstyle frailing uh, really covered not only the bass, but the rhythm and the lead as well. So he needed a guitar that had a really, really quick decay and that was pretty dry sounding so that he could keep the bass going and you'd still be able to hear all of that upper register type of stuff. Obviously he had a very strong aesthetic sense as well, uh, and he certainly wasn't shy about sharing his opinion. If you know him or know about him, you definitely know that he certainly made his opinions clear from the very beginning, and that's exactly how it was when we went to build this guitar. He'd been playing our original Dirty 30 single-o with Tailpiece, uh, which I think the, the main one that he had is with his family now. He played it right up until he passed. Uh, he had a really nice Colton case for it, and I remember him joking with me that the case cost way, way more than the guitar itself did, but uh, he knew that it was really protecting something important. He wanted a guitar that had the same sound and vibe as his Dirty 30s model, but also had a little bit more of individualistic and stylistic kind of components that reflected more of his personal aesthetic. The first prototypes were built in the summer of 2014. We gave him a couple to take on tour and play on the road. He did play them a lot, but he kept going back to that original Dirty 30s guitar. The project kind of went quiet for a few years, and then we met up again at South By 2018, and he was really, really excited to get things going again and to finally get this guitar finished and out into the world. We went back and forth on a number of different ideas and appointments until we settled on the design that you see now. He gave us his final approval in summer 2020, and we got right to work building a prototype ASAP. I got the final prototype in September 2020 after he passed, and with the blessing of his family and his team, we moved right forward to building a full run of guitars. We are so sad that he didn't actually get to see and hold the finished product, but I can tell you this, he would be so excited to know that we finally got it across home plate.